Welcome, everyone, to the latest State of Play, the first of 2024, and one that is pretty anticipated. If you've heard the leaks, you know. If you don't, we'll see if it comes to pass. But hey, for yeah. now, let's start off with PlayStation Studios. Oh, uh, Helldivers. Helldivers 2. This game comes out soon, so yeah, it makes sense. The marketing campaign has been on point uh, so far, so there is, there is that. We have Star Troopers at home, I see. Basically. <laughs> Become a legend. The D looks like an O a little bit there in Legend. Become a leg. Become a legendo. It's the byproduct of bulky fonts. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> well, my work here is done. <laughs> but you didn't do anything. Coming. Yeah, you're right. I didn't do anything. Coming soon after lunch. It's uh, is it to do with Dune or something? <gasps> Wait, uh, was that a put metal down your, gear? Put down, your, put down your weapons. You have twenty seconds to comply. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's not uh, at two or nine. It looks something else. Twenty twenty four. The first three years of PS5 have given us incredible. All right. So this is yeah, Armand Hall. The, the head of PlayStation Studios, who was up, he was up until recently the head of Guerrilla Games, but he's been promoted. PlayStation Plus with new features, including PS5 game streaming, and with PSVR2 and PlayStation Portal, which released right. last November, we're Let committed to offering new and surprising ways for that? audience to okay. interact with their PS5. But none of this means anything without great games like. Helldivers 2, which kicks off a year of amazing experiences and diverse ways to play. Today, we're looking ahead to titles coming later this year and beyond, with extended gameplay and announcements we hope Also, I love that cheeky little thing. Well, none of this would matter without the games. It's like, I love how pretty much everyone is super aware of how important the games are ever since, well, that dark era where features were focused on more than the games. Awesome. Well... Both me and Deji are really looking forward to this one because it looks so good. Well, me too. Well, they, they should start focusing on games, right? Because how many uh, well, exclusives does the yeah. PS5... Oh, we, were, we, we, we were uh, presenting the other single sure. place where it was presented. Sorry. And, uh... Sorry. Um, shift up. Yeah, that's the fun fact. Uh, recently, um, PlayStation announced that they were strengthening their, their partnership with Shift Up, and this game now is officially a second party uh, PlayStation uh, Studios game. It's still getting a PC release, if I remember correctly. It's, well, yeah. it was, it's the Xbox version that was quietly cancelled. It's like, a, it's like with that Stranding too. It's, it's second party. Mm -hmm. That's What's a nice... game called again? Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. It's, an, it's a, a, a character action game, as you can see. That's mm. a nice Xenoblade Chronicles X cosplay you've got going there, honey. <laughs> it reminds you... me a lot of games done for the PS3 about uh, um, stuff like N360, stuff like Ninja Blade, for example. Make sure to stay cautious. I swear the Alpha and AT by it. So, post apocalyptic I... setting by the looks I of it. Think... I think Adam, okay, don't know if it's him, but Adam sounded like he was played by Ray Chase, uh, which would be a bit of a novelty because uh, the poor guy has been typecast as villains uh, ever seen after he was done playing Noctis. So. Well, he played um, Nier. Um... <laughs> you, I know what I said. <laughs> City built underneath the wasteland by the oh wow people. she owned finally wow, got her own uh, city good to know wow wow uh, so that hasn't changed what since the matrix movies <laughs> <laughs> well it's nice that they worship the 14th member of organization there is a lot, 13. Of, um, there is a lot of appeal in the aesthetic in uh, cyberpunk aesthetic of this kind lives the idea of, uh, you know, these blocks, uh, cities that are gigantic blocks, uh, one stacked yeah. on top of the other. Yeah, yeah speaking of cyberpunk... Ghost, Sorry, go. in the Shell, you also know about that. Yeah, speaking of cyberpunk, I actually, I do, I think I still have 
a PS4 disc of it, but I've never actually played it. You probably oh. should, isn't it? That, that, Is well, it playable? Well, actually, well, well, actually I remember, the PS4 version can be freely upgraded to the PS5 version, which is... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I, that's what I not do. To not to mention, here's what the thing that Dwibs can do with the PS4 disc. He can play the PS5 proper, better version, but he can still play the unpatched PS4 version to have fun breaking the, the original version of the game, so he can have both. So. Yay! Acquire new skills. Selenium. Upgrade equipment. So basically, they're the equivalent of your bonfires because they allow you also to yeah. upgrade them. Yeah, they're, they're, tech, they're definitely going through the aesthetic. Uh, that's what these remind me of Ghost in the Shell. I would say it actually has a look of Metal Gear Rising. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Uh, Ow. And she died. Oh, okay. It has a hand for a mouth. I played Dark Souls 3, this doesn't really impress me. Doesn't yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, honestly, I'd be more freaked out if the, um, if it was, if the face was its bum or whatever. You mean, so, cat dog? Possibly. Oh, so we play someone who was created to perform genocide. I was about to say, nothing uh, as exciting like systematic genocide. <laughs> Yay! Genocide! To mm. be? Is that you? <laughs> I will find it. And I will Actually, yeah, I am getting some near Automata vibes from this. Well, I think that's on part of us. Clearly, trailers uh, did give the same kind of vibe. Yeah. But I, ideally, uh, the game is, uh, you know. You can tell that the game is assuming a personal identity with each trader. This game... This one definitely showcases it too. This game really feels like Nier Automata and Final Fantasy VII had a baby. Oh, British persons! But British persons <laughs> in the game as well, yay! <laughs> Probably the villain then. <laughs> didn't, didn't sound villainous, but maybe... Uh... A twist villain! Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Why? Okay, okay. Games with pre things with predominantly American casts. Can we please cast British people as something other than the villains? You, you have Xenoblade for that. Um, Everyone. No, <laughs> Everyone. I think, I think what is, Marco, I think what Lewis is referring to is the idea that, you know, a game that is mainly dubbed over by American voice actor and just happen to include one or two British VAs complimentary. Well, this, what about uh, Metal Gear Solid 3? That was back in 2004. I need something more recent. <laughs> I mean, there you got. Go, oh, yep, there we are. April 26th. Right, so April 26th. April 26th. Okay. Awesome. Reclaim Earth for humankind. Glory Next. to mankind right. or something it's on the like list. that. Yeah. But... Alright, so he's going to oh, talk. I guess we're going to talk more about, about the game. It. Sure. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing this is um I'm guessing this is one of South Korea one of South Korea's um yes, bigger so. games. Again, yeah. um PlayStation you know, has actually part recently partnered uh, like strength of focus a lot on games with Chinese and Korean developers recently. Even in general, South Korea is actually rising up a bit uh, in recent years when it comes to developing yeah. games both in the end uh, you know. Oh, there we go. Ah, here we go. There it is. Oh, it looks good but so one, far. But what looks exactly okay. the same, I to be honest. <laughs> I won't comment. Oh, oh, that's fine by me. Just don't mess with it, please. I won't. Um, okay, I can't comment so much on the graphics because the stream's a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, the stream it's is a, going it's a compressed, bit yeah. Okay. Oh, oh snap, they did the adventure two pose. God, it still looks so, so cool. So, are they, are, are they changing the story uh, or something? Whoa, Wait, holy shit. That's a well, new I mean, level. Generations, well, I mean, generations oh my god! Black Doom? Place, so. Black yeah, Doom? Yeah, yeah, I get the hook. 
I think it's a case where Shadow's campaign includes level based around oh, from SA2. From S no, SA2. Oh, it's Westopolis! It's Westopolis! Yes! SA2 oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Based hey, Bio Lizard! Yeah. Is this being made by Sonic Team? Like. Hey, at so the very least, Shadow the... Generation. No, the... don't do that title, no! At yes, the they least... actually did it, hey, Sonic at X the very Shadow! Least, uh... Oh, Why? Um, at the very least, now the Biolizor can be actually bought by the proper Hedgehog. In True. Hey I, I did, hey, I didn't know Honkai Star Rail was playing. Alright, so this is uh, again, this, uh, this is made by the same people who make uh, Genshin Impact, right? Or yeah. yeah. Genshin and Impact Honkai and Star uh, Honkai Star Rail. As a, matter, as a reminder, because I, I have a couple of people that I know that play these kind of games, but they told me, despite the game, the company being called Hoyoverse, the games are technically not connect, connected. They might have a few events that have like a promotional character here and there, but canon-wise they apparently are fairly separate on their own, so don't worry about that. At least that's what it looked like. I, I won't, uh, to be fair, I only put Zenless time on Genshin. This was showcased previously, so we knew what this was yeah. coming. Yeah, in development. Yeah, we're, we're making it, alright? Leave us alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Foam Stars. I think this has recently been on... I think this has been announced for Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, not just that, also it's being... It's uh, one of the games uh, promoted for uh, PlayStation Plus uh, for February of 2024. As a reminder, last time something like this happened, it happened with the re-release of the Virtual Fighter 5. So, it's a more of a case that Sony is using the third-party games that are heavy focused on multiplayer to do that. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'll give it a try just to see how it... Is it free to out. play? No, it, it's on the no, Plus, if you, right? If you're on PS Plus or, get, or you have Game Pass, apparently yes. Hmm. Then I guess I won't test it for now. February <laughs> 6. So. Okay. Yeah, it's part of PlayStation Plus monthly games. Now, what do we have here? Uh, I think that's Dave the Diver. Or not. Yep, yes, Dave the Diver. Yep. The absolutely indie game. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a reference to something, Joe? Remember, Dweebs, okay, you, you, you didn't knew probably, but uh, uh, infamously, the game was actually nominated for Best Indie at the Game Awards last year, despite the fact that, as Deji eloquently said, this is not an indie. Oh, Godzilla the event. What? <laughs> Is it based on the new movie? I I know the yeah probably minus one. Oh, my, either minus one or um or no, Contra this is not the minus one design, is it? Oh, this doesn't look like it. Oh, this one level. Hmm. In, run, it's Godzilla. In case you don't know, that kind of form is uh, the most dangerous because it means Godzilla is about to blow up. Huh. So I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I guess he's gonna blow up. <laughs> Tone Lock Studios. Is that Alucard? I was about to say that being St. Valentine, but no. <laughs> hmm. Some hunky woodsman by the looks of it. Oh, please. Uh, it's, uh, it, it has crafting. Can you imagine hmm. if it's the new Legacy of Cain? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> because the first Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen, played similar to this, uh, just less action-y. This looks like Darksiders. Uh, a bit, but not really. Hmm. Hmm. V. What does oh, the okay. V stand for? V rising or you rising. I don't know, but it's coming. <laughs> Whatever it says, it's coming this Next, year. This year. Probably for October. Maybe. <laughs> Eventually. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Benson. This next game is a result of a very close partnership with Konami and marks the return of a horror franchise that has been with Silent Hill? the original Oh, Silent Hill 2. Right. Let's take a look at what's next for Silent Hill. 
Alright. Alright. Let's have a look. See. They did mention they were going to. Oh, I'm trying to confirm the content, of course. I just. Plus, is that thingy trigger one? I just think that they're, they're remaking Sound Hill 2, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The only problem is is who's developing it, that who's the, the, because the last game they made was uh, a bit iffy with some of the way but, uh, oh, uh, problematic ending of certain topics. That's just okay. No, this doesn't look like the I second think game. I think it's it? the new game instead of it being the. Oh, okay. Then. Mm. All right then. Although I'm gonna be honest, remaking the second game, I don't oh, think it's. Oh, uh, It's in first person, like PT was supposed to be. Well, but... well, I mean, Resident Evil's been making a killing out of doing it lately, so yeah, why not? It, it, I was it's thinking that... LPT managed to shape the horror genre for Was it PT or was it Amnesia? It was more PT, Amnesia, no? Because PT... Amnesia had still more open environment. PT um, made popular this corridor kind of format. Yeah. Uh, mm. which if you play true, it, true. Was, the claustrophobic you aspect to it. If you play Resident Evil 7, it's basically like that. Because so. uh, remember, Kojima was originally uh, going to be working on what was right. at the time called Silent Hills. Mm -hmm. that was, and PT was meant to be like a no, Silent, sure. Silent Hills. Silent Hill. Oh, it's free to play. Full game free to play. And All before, right. and before it turns out that this is just Silent Hills redressed into a full game. No, this is just PT again. <laughs> that's, well, that's my point. PT was supposed to be Silent Hills, but hey, here's Silent Hills, but as a much smaller game, yo. Amazing. But yes, it's being shattered, right? Available today. <laughs> it's out now. Uh, I'm Another sorry. Reminder, appar mm -hmm. Apparently, we're getting a new Silent Hill movie also this year, and apparently, it's in continuity with the, pre the first two, which I, uh, is odd. Wow. Um, the fact I haven't we... seen either of those. Well, I didn't dislike the first one. Uh, the first the one was one okay. Is, the first one is more. Oh, there's a Silent Hill 2, I think. This is the second one, yeah. Why are they remaking two instead of one first? Exactly. I, I get the idea. The whole the similar why we're really making uh, Metal Gear Solid Three instead of anything else because popular popular entry. It's but the, the more but popular one. <laughs> it's it's more like the the second one stands way better than the first one. The first one is a lot more uh, looks a lot more older at least. My question uh, is uh, okay. what a lovely sight. Aside from the the questionable you know repertoire of the developers uh, you know aside from that. Uh, my biggest concern is that uh, if they actually will maintain the separate puzzle difficulty that the original had or not. Uh, because again, the original Silent Hill trilogy was actually relatively groundbreaking uh, when it comes to accessibility for having that. Uh, so it would be nice if that was kept. Uh. Oh, so it, it, it's going to be Resident Evil style, okay. Yeah, instead of having the fixed camera, it's going to be third person. Oh crap, they're gonna drop a nuke. Silent Hill 2, 2. In development for PlayStation 5. Wish list now. Hey. The creator of Bioshock. Oh, right. They did have something. Yeah, I think we saw the trailer for this uh, before and. Uh... Oh, it's System Shock 3. No, yeah. no, 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 it's something else. Right, yeah. <laughs> now, this, this does look, I does feel like my shock. Yeah, I think it's called Judas or something. Again, we, we did saw a trailer before and... Uh... Mm. Well, what's the game called? Judas did nothing wrong. <laughs> Remember, believes uh, one of the Enix uh, old games uh, is literally called Jesus uh, because it's set yeah. on PlayStation called Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Square, real easy. We dare you. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, 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 oh. What? You, can, you can blow up the world in this game. <laughs> in the meantime, just to say this, like, uh, to the true the info, Son Sonic X Shadow Generations is coming to all platforms, including oh, Switch, really? and Switch, PS4, Xbox One, so basically, everybody can get it. Yeah. Oh, and it says Steam here on on the trailer, meaning hopefully this will not be exclusive to Epic for a year. Hopefully, then. But it will probably have the move. Well, yeah, this, this, that's the all Sega games have nowadays too. So unfortunately, that's kind of how it is. Fix what you broke. Wow, well, they break. Yeah, Judas. Judas. Oh, I, wanted be, I wanted it to be called Judas did nothing wrong. Judas. Vertigo Games. Vertigo Games. Okay. He drives you insane. No. Think of this fire as a beacon. Its warmth. Its energy. Is he a stalker? Hmm. No. In collaboration Deep with Silver. Deep Silver. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Stalker too. I'm assuming Deep Silver are just the And publishers. Dimitri Glukowski. Yeah, so. yeah, I think it is Stalker. VR. VR? Oh, VR. VR yeah, too. What, was this game already in, in first person before too? Uh, it was in development. It's still in development at the very least. Uh, so oh, okay, maybe then. they're just announcing a separate VR version. Again, assuming it's Stalker. Because because uh, if you buy that's, no, I can see that happening. Because uh, when you if you buy Hellblade <laughs> One on Steam, you get both versions, like the normal version and the VR version. So I can see that being the case. Uh, it's like Metro. Say, oh, it's Metro. Metro oh, Awakening. okay. Metro Awakening VR. It makes sense because Metro is actually part of Deep Silver as a range of IPs now. What's right. this now? But Deep Coming Silver, this year. will you ever bring back your beloved franchise, Mighty Number no. Nine, for another go? <laughs> no. Urban Sorry, World like, Games. You, you first need to be like an anime fan on Prom Night. But I can't sob Wait. that much. But is. Does Deep Silver have the rights from Mighty Number no. Nine? They have Last the I checked, rights. yeah, yeah. Oh. Like Level Five owns the IP, owns the IP. I think uh, it's I a think. Cool, like, a, like a double kind of thing, similar to how yeah. specifically for Dark Souls, uh, um, From Software and Bandai Namco <laughs> share the rights. Yeah. Okay. That being, that being said, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Deep Silver wouldn't object to Level Five finally releasing those handheld versions of Mighty Number no. Nine. Even though those are probably considering dead. Considering Level Five you know. concept is working on Fantasy Life, I don't. I'm pretty sure Keiji Nobuna just wants to move on and not dredge up bad memories. That's nice. Sure sucks to be anybody who paid good yeah, Patreon yeah, we'll pay, or Kickstarter we'll money for, for the, the handheld version. Okay. Yeah. As a VR title, this looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah it what looks is like this? A, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of looks like a modern take on Bloodwings Pumpkinhead's Revenge. Uh, is that <laughs> a good sense. thing? I've heard very uh, no, iffy well, things. Okay, pumpkin, it's also a case Revenge where you need to forge your own weapons, enchant it. It seems very it's taking Ooh. full advantage of the VR stuff. A legendary yeah. Tales, action, action role, play role game. playing game. February 8th, so just over a week from now. Oh, All right. Yes. Oh, Actually, is this Final cool. Fantasy VII now? No, probably not. Capcom. It's Monster Hunter. Dragon it's Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. Oh, the Dragon's Dogma? Yeah. Looks like yeah. yeah, Dragon's Dogma too. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know. P I've, I've, if I recall correctly, fans have definitely been vying for a Dragon's Dogma yeah, sequel, so. so... And Dragon's Dogma 2 is basically Capcom being released for the first half of 2024. Not a bad way to start. Well, I mean, that aside from the Apologistus trilogy, but yeah. To be fair, I just part of that mine. New title, you know, because uh, Monster, the new Monster Hunter is for next year, at the very least. So... Mm, okay, makes sense. It's pro there's probably also a Resident Evil in the works at some point. We don't know if it's nine or something else. Just remake Cold Veronica, please. Yeah, everyone said that. <laughs> I, I still can't believe Cold Veronica got passed over just so that they could rush. Well, okay, they didn't rush out the Resident Evil 4 remake. Resident Evil 3 remake got rushed bad, but I digress. But yeah, no, seriously. 
Like, a Resident Evil 4 remake could have waited, guys. Just give Code Veronica the remake. It needed it the most. Even more than... You'll get a... You'll get a remake of 5 and 6 and you'll like it. I mean, you'll get a remake of 0. <laughs> I mean... I mean, don't get me wrong, I like 5. I like Do 0. Do you Marco? I'm probably one of the few people on the planet who actually want to know what happened to Billy after the events of 0. Dragons so... talk about aye aye. I mean, I think Zero is pro alongside Veronica probably could could Mark want a, uh, a remake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Asuda. Oh, Rise of the Ronin. Cool. Rise of the Ronin. In case you don't know, it's the game that Tecmo Koi is developing specifically for Sony, and it's about uh, that lovely period of time in which Japan was still, you know, in the isolationist period, and America gently knocked at their border with a with huge boats with huge guns and told them open the border or we'll open fire on you ah good old commodore perry he spoke softly but carried one hell of a stick so as you can imagine it's a tumultuous period for japan and you play in this yes where japan is Starting to integrate okay. with the outside world. Admittedly, it actually it's interesting because not many stories were told around this time, so... Again, between Ghost of Tsushima and this, uh, it's actually nice to see a period, periods of history of Japan that are just mostly, you know, talked, of, talked about uh, not, and not being, you know, used that much until this point. Uh, oh my god, sweetie, that man just grapple-hooked and is now gliding over the town! Eh, whatever, he does that around this time of day anyway. Have you been have you been drinking again? Oh, and he <laughs> spawns a Now he just spawned a horse out of nowhere, honey. He does that at five. Hey Jova. Hey Jova, you could you missed opportunity You could have made a um, OG like a, an amazing fantasy fifteen gag. Like a, like Mommy, there's a there's a man climbing the wall. That's the last horror movie I'm taking you to, young man. <laughs> okay, first off, uh, what horror movies even uh, on that year specifically even have that? And second why do you take your little child to horror movies, lady? But yeah, for the record, also, because I know that that movie, and I saw that movie and it's set also during this period, if you haven't seen it, don't watch The Last Samurai. Tom Cruise alone cannot save you from that. Also, um, giant, giant mutant, of course, just as the history books told me about. To be fair, they, unlike with the Genji Rise of, you know, Days of the Blade, they don't claim it's historically accurate. And I'm, you know, always am fine with injecting Supernatural into these things. But yeah, this is interesting to look at that era where Japan was starting to assimilate culture from outside, but as you can imagine, that caused schisms between those who pretty much wanted to stay their way it's or the more, highway. It's a bit more than that, Jova, you know, because beforehand they were still actually having a contest, specifically the Dutch uh, landing in some ports and exporting stuff. Didn't like, they have a contact with us? I think they did, with the Portuguese as well. Uh, that, okay, it was mostly just the Dutch. I don't know if it's other countries like that, but it's Well, I know that we influenced a lot of stuff from them. I know that. But, uh, the point is that, uh, you know, indeed, well, like I forementioned this uh, period about uh, enforcing the opening of the borders, it was more of a case of assimilating a culture and more of a case of also changing a government system and as a result, right, the so entire state mm. of the country. Rise of the Ronin. Ronin. It came out yesterday. Um, if you have, I think it's on Netflix, so there's an animated series also called uh, Blue Eye Samurai. I d distinctly recommend it because it's set uh, in the period, I think, roughly before this. Uh, so, that also cat. What's the Shin Sengumi? This is exclusive for the PS5, is that it? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's a PlayStation Studio, play, Sony's funding the game. Again, so, yeah. Tecmo Koi mm. is uh, making the game, but Sony's publishing it. It uh, might so. eventually come to PC, but that would probably be at probably. least a year or two after. Yeah. But yeah, wait. Yeah, okay. it, will, it, will, it will come to PC eventually, but for now it will be on the console only. And um, uh, you might want oh, to still okay. wait March even a bit. It will also be wait a bit more because uh, Tecmo Koi's uh, PC ports tends to be notoriously bad at launch. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I mean, they have. Well, Sony own. I mean, Sony own Nixies now. So, 
Well, as a thing, the, the PC probably probably still be made by Tip and Crate themselves still, though, unfortunately. But we'll see. I we'll think see this is until dawn. They did oh yeah, the until dawn. The until yeah, dawn isn't remastered, until right? dawn also getting a I movie too? I hope it's too. just a receipt for a master, not a remake. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's getting a, a movie, and to go along with that, we get a remaster. There are yes. A few things I need to make sure. I mean, might as well. Well, well again, the original game was already on PS4, so it's a bit redundant. <laughs> Well, not as redundant. Well, 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 that's the, the only way you can have 60 FPS on the PS4 version is by playing it on, on the 5 with the uncapped frame rate, which can cost some uh, yeah, uneven frame pacing, so remasters could still make the game run a bit better. It depends on how they're going to handle it. And this game has been out uh, for a long time anyway, so I guess I, it's not too hard. Uh, too hard yeah, this is not me. Last of Us 2. Because <laughs> no. uh, the original Until Dawn came out in like 2015, I think. Right. Was it in the earlier than that? It wasn't this a, a, a release year? Uh, I think it was for the slightly, PS4? slightly after that. Uh. Okay, fine. Whatever. The Yeah, this looks like a... Yeah, it's a remaster, it's not, I think. Or is it... Wait. Rebuilt and enhanced for PS5 and PC. Uh, no. oh, Until 15, dawn. Yeah. Well, it looks good for what we've seen here. Oh, coming yeah. to PS5 and good. PC. There you go. This year. Oh, cool. Don't know when yet. Oh, that's trending. Awesome, let's see. That's running two. The, the, yeah, this is Kojima. Yeah. Kojima the trying to take the... the uh, Kojima trying to uh, take the uh, don't predict the future challenge. Impossible, yeah. impossible. Basically, to Marco, let me... Uh, no, not this. Kojima has a history of predicting the future in his games, especially with No Your Solid 2 being the famous mm -hmm. predicted how the internet is going to be. So here's what he said about he he said that when I first released the first game in 2019, I actually already had the entire script ready of the second game, but I didn't want to put the future again, so I decided to rewrite it from from the ground up. <laughs> <laughs> That's because the. Uh, uh, Marco, the Death Stranding one kind of predicted the, the 2020 pandemic. So. Mm. <laughs> the role of Postman, you need to. Yeah. So it's like The Simpsons, I guess. <laughs> so, to an extent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, this is fragile there, so that's nice. So he's going to predict now AI? Oh, I already predicted Mark, AI actually, in, in actually, Metal Gear. Actually, actually, Marco, Metal Gear Solid 4 has a lot of social commentary on AI, oh, so boy. yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah he, I was he, thinking, I was, I was actually reminded of uh, Metal Gear 2 also has an AI. Uh, <laughs> so, like, okay, uh, wait, no. No, I thought it was made by Hideo Kojima's... Uh, oh, pool. whoa! Um, honey, did you swallow that toy spaceship? What the Maybe. Uh, Teo, the Teo, 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 is that straining? Are you really surprised? I don't want to feel Kojima's touch. <laughs> Alright. What's next? Norman Reedus actually giving birth at some point? I mean, why not? Uh, I mean, if Arnold Schwarzenegger can give birth, why can't Norman Reedus? Yes, <laughs> that was truly the inspiration for Kideo Kojima's latest yeah. masterpiece. <laughs> Ju Junior. <laughs> Why does everyone look like they've been doused in flour? Cryogenic uh, freezing, I assume? Yeah, that's probably some kind of explanation in the plot. We'll, we'll see. There yeah. goes. Would you say they're. <clears throat> ghosts of Tsushima. Sounds like a Those hands they're, no, they're the Those... ghosts in the machine. Don't ask me. Those hands there, are they going to malfunction at some point and start choking her? I wonder. Is it a showcase before believes they function as a mask, apparently? Why not yeah. just use yeah. an actual mask rather than something with fingers that has a gap, though? It's cool, shut up. Because it's cool, shut up. <laughs> maybe maybe she needs to upgrade. Yeah, now he looks at... better. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume maybe it was... Stylistic stuff. Was probably, was probably, there's probably some kind of context that we're not, not getting. What? Uh... Wow, that actually looks really good stop motion wise. Actually. What? That just looks weird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the idea, uh, Parson. No, but the animation is very eager. It has that same kind of animation of um, that. Uh, the Spider Verse. The Spider Verse. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I have a question. Have you guys seen the Into the Spider-Verse outfits in, yes. the, in the Insomniac games? Yeah, yeah they got the uh, slow frame rate thing going for them. It, it, it's probably using the same thing. Also, I noticed a slight jab at God of War, the North Saga, because Normal Use was about to put in the same way God, uh, Kratos puts Mimir's head, but the puppet complained and asked we put somewhere else. <laughs> Anyway, the DHV Magellan's here to back you up. As always. Right, so, so, I guess um, we have more mailman duties to do across different planes and terrains. Yeah, I was gonna say, I wonder how, um, I wonder how, I wonder, I wonder how they're gonna address, um, some of the um, complaints from the last game. American They'll probably they already did the that in the web. So the retros cut um, reworked the opening hours and uh, also added more more extra stuff. So this game probably will follow suit. Going See, off of what uh, we're seeing, one, one of the best things about Death Stranding is the sense of community that the game builds because it's not just about you trying to journey; it's also about helping the play, the other players because. Even though there's no online co-op, you can't. The, the the players share the same world when they're playing online. So any bridges you make, you're helping players, and players can even give you likes that uh, help that uh, benefit you. So the game, the game, the game is all about how important co uh, cooperation community is, and the game. This is the gameplay to convey that that theme. Has anyone tried to make a bridge where you just drive over the whole game map? Yes, actually, you, it's possible you can do that. It will it will take a long time to get to, to do that, uh, but it is technically feasibly possible. Humanity will be free from the need to move around. Um, that sounds like you get Wally if you do that, my dude. And you don't want Wally's future. He called himself a ghost, but. I found a way back from the beach just so he could kill us. Did you try and make yeah, God again? Troy, Troy, Troy Baker is alive once again, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god, the Joker! And he's the Joker! Troy Baker's played the Joker again! You see, you see, Norman, we do live in a society after all. Oh <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, Trey Baker did voice the Joker for Arkham Origins. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's, what, that's I what I mean, was referencing. Trey Baker is probably the best candidate for a Mark Hamill replacement as Joker, since he was actually able to do a spot-on imitation. Yeah, he was actually, and um, that and, and and that and I also, like I said, I also really. Like I said before, I actually find him a more convincing, younger version of Patrick Zimmerman, aka Ocelot, right, than Josh Keaton does. Don't get me wrong, I love Josh Keaton, but I think uh, Troy is a more convincing, younger version of Patrick Zimmerman. And to be fair to Josh Keaton, he's playing like a much, much, much younger version of Ocelot, whereas Troy Baker's Ocelot is closer to the Ocelot yeah. we're aware of in age, so I'd say that also might have played a part in it. Was it you, Heads? Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? Oh shit! You still don't know, do you? Fuck! You did it. If you don't, oh, if you don't know who Lou is, a samurai. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. But let's just say what he just said is a big thing. Yeah, a big deal. Yeah. And yes, so he has yes, a guitar and the as a weapon. In case you don't know, Trey Baker's character in the in the processioning in this. Uh, Acts very, you know, tough and menacing, but he basically is just a gigantic weeb. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I mean, Mad Max Fury Road has a guy using a guitar as a flamethrower, so why not? Well, it's a consumer it's game. I expect you can that. Still put you can still words to good use, but keep in mind that he's not as cool as he appears he want to be. <laughs> so it's Raven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. The biggest question is, can you still drink Monster? I'm glad energy? that uh, I'm glad that Ludwig, Ludwig Force was still doing the music because uh, after this game he left Kojima Productions, but he needs to work as a freelancer. But it seems like he's still going to be working with Kojima still. So that's nice. Good to see that the baby is still precious. About everything.
Don't All right, so the, the, is the actual Let's name Death Stranding 2? Let's see. Oh, it is. Death Stranding 2 yeah. on the beach. On yeah, the beach. This, yeah, yeah the, the, the subtitle yeah, was leaked on the beach, friends, but the number not. Uh, so, this time okay. we're going on vacation. Oh, there you go. See, that's Yay! What, there you go. See, that, that's what the hands uh, are for. See, it's, it's easy. It's a light cigarette. Like Hotel Transylvania 3. We're going on vacation on the beach. Snake would love these. Of course. And there's Al Fanning. Yeah, Al Fanning um, was also thought to be in the game, so pretty cool, actually. Aurora, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm more familiar with her from Super 8. There are amino acids in tar, as in proteins? Of course. And there's Guillermo Latour's character, of course. Did you think that course, yeah. creatures could emerge from it? Some have even theorized that he the looks so different without the beard. Primordial soup. I was there. I saw her home. It was a hellhole. Should we have connected? Yeah, that was the tagline even in the first teaser. Yeah. Well, the first, well my guess is, uh, again, it is probably going to have some kind of... A, now that the humanity is connected again, there's probably going to be some problems because people yeah, have stayed far apart uh, for so long. So, yeah. Oh, 2035. Okay. Well, again, that's common. That's common. Could you have liked yeah. to, take, to take his time? Oh, oh George yeah. Miller is going to make a special appearance. But there you go. There's Wait. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Calling wow. it George Miller designed wow. that electric um, guitar weapon. Well, it's it's and George Miller's know, appearance, but he's actually being played by somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, Kojima-sensei. Today... I'm excited to announce that... You see, Jeff, we can have him too. You cannot play with him. Yeah. <laughs> Kojima is not yours to keep, You know, Jeff. you know, I swear, I feel like, you know, for as much as Konami tried to keep the man down, I feel like their bad treatment of him was one of the best things it could do for a Kojima's rep, because ever since... Well, to Konami, to be fair to Konami, both Kojima and Konami are following each other on Twitter right now, so it seems oh, like... Oh, I guess they're on better terms so yeah, so though. behind so behind the scenes it seems like they buried the hatchet. That is nothing short of amazing and, um, given how bad Konami were, but kudos. Also also I mean Kojima Productions do have a studio in Amsterdam and Herman Holst is Dutch, so maybe that's where they are. <laughs> now Jeff Oh god that's it oh god that's it. 40 this guy's been working for 40 years in games, and look, he still looks like he's in his uh, Again, 40s. similar to creators like Hiroi Koraki, I guess he just sacrifices uh, the souls of the young to see himself young. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, okay, he has a bit of gray on his beard, but no gray on the top, amazingly. Uh, isn't Kojima Productions also making a game with the Xbox, or am, yes, am I mistaken? Yeah, it's called an OD. OD. Okay. It's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a horror game. So Some he's working on two games leaks, right now. But I the official trailer is the one about the the, the, the face is screaming. It's and weird. Couldn't Death Stranding kind of count as for a horror game anyway? Um, extent, huh? It does have horror elements, Jova, but OD is going to be a, a specifically what? focused uh, horror. What's element. happening? Horror elements are the uh, oh, they're actually at, you, oh, they're actually at the, the stage. Wait, the they're at Sony. Oh, no, Sony and Columbia pictures. pictures. Oh my god, they're actually oh, well, well, using well, remember, the actually, movie well, studio. Remember, there's, a dev, the, the, there's apparently a Death Stranding movie in the works, so that, I can Before see that being go, I have one final oh. announcement. Gee, I wonder so what that final, last final announcement that could be. Oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. So Rebirth is going to get its own state of play. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. On February 6th, roughly one week from now. Sure. Okay, cool. Okay. Sure. My guess is they thought, okay, if we put Rebirth here, this thing is going to go on for 50 minutes. Let's ins uh, or more Why not? Let <laughs> let's instead have Rebirth have its own spe super special awesome state of play, which is fair. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Do have some right. yeah, I thought this was a pretty good uh, state of play. Um, the highlights for me were um, Sonic and Shadow Generations. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, they, how the hell they integrate Shadow the Hedgehog game stuff um, into this without the guns. Um, that's assuming they're not including gunplay. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem like it's already seen. It's probably just going to be like an extra campaign with Shadow, and that's basically yeah. it. But I seriously doubt the gameplay is going to be heavily reworked. I mean, Forces did the same thing, right? 
Well, actually, in in, Sh in Forces, Shadow is just a skin. This uh, he's talking about the, the Shadow DLC uh, where he did get sort of versions of levels to himself. You remember the Shadow campaign in Forces? Oh, episode Shadow, sure. Well, Episode Shadow, Marco is um uh, is just, like Sonic Shadow gameplay wise is just a skin of Sonic, whereas the, in the trailer you can see Shadow using his chaos powers. And it says here that Shadow, the Shadow part of the game is its own uh, separate campaign. So it's going to be something more elaborate. It's easier. Go ahead. There's... Well, but it's it's like I said, uh, Episode Shadow was also a separate campaign, technically. Uh, more like an yeah. add-on. I wouldn't really call that a campaign, a campaign of its own, to be honest. Go on. We'll see. Um, as for other highlights, um. Yeah, I'd, I'd say um, I'd say that that game they showed off near the start, um, the one that looked like um, the one that looked like um, near Automata in Final Fantasy Star VII had a love child, according to Jova. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, <laughs> and the rest and, and everything else looked pretty solid as well. Even even if you know games like Death Stranding aren't exactly my cup of tea. Sure. But that's not the game's fault. It's just a me thing. Hmm. Um. And uh, that's really about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, what they do with the Seven Rebirth stream next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's about it for me. All right. Uh, Marco, what do you think? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm interested in, in Generations. Um, Ronan looks cool, but I, I guess I'll have to wait to play it. Saddle <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blade looks good in terms of combat. I'm 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 not entirely sure because I didn't understand through the footage. Is it supposed to be like near? Like it's supposed to be an RPG? Yeah. No. So. It... no. Actual uh, actual it? RPG. You you can basically oh, okay. augment yourself in different ways at the uh, yeah, checkpoint system, which yeah. are the camp. So it's yeah. technically kind of like uh, near, basically. Not, think yeah. of it like near Automata, yeah. If, if it yeah. Is. yeah. Because uh, I'm intrigued. Yes, for sure, it looks good. I'm just a little bit um. I'm starting to get a little bit, uh, not sick, but more, I don't have time to play <laughs> many <laughs> so many RPGs. So I, I'm uh, starting to miss the, the, the more straightforward action games, mm -hmm. because a lot of them are going the, the open world RPG style. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks good. Um, and the... Uh, yeah, so, but yes, that's it. Well, Death Stranding, I haven't played the first one, so I can't really comment on the second one. Well, th th let me put it this way. Death Stranding is a game that you have to go in with an open mind, because this is much like Kojima did with the, the original Metal Gear, where in an era full of action games, he made a game where you have to hide instead of fighting. Yeah. This is, this is kind of the same thing, where he's going out of his way to make a game where the gameplay is doing something that is very, very not at all what you usually expect from video games, which is, oh, you have to deliver packages but it's all let's just say the gameplay experience is very different than your usual but uh it's a but i can tell you this if you're the kind of guy who likes to play a, a game that is relaxing to play mm -hmm. it's definitely something that's considerable because it's a very relaxing game to play where you're just enjoying the scenery or listening to the great music like you like you like you're on vacation and you're uh, mountain hiking Basically, mm. uh, it has a very relaxing vibe to it. Let's just say it's a very, it's an intentional a game that's intended to be very different, like an alternative to the kind of kind of like journey. Kind of like journey. If it, if it helps you, sure. If it mm. helps you, uh, okay. although it's much more elaborate in terms of how you traverse. Like let me put it this way: Death Stranding is not so much about getting to the destination; it's about the journey you have getting there because the overall way you explore the world is very meticulous and very detailed and you have to pick the, the correct terrain to go through it so you don't make sure you don't drop packages let's just say it's very difficult to explain in words but there's just something about that that is so unique and can and if it clicks with someone it becomes really cool but yeah. let's, it, it's a very uh, uh we, intentionally weird and uh unorthodox game but it, but it's one of those things where if you want to play a game that's unlike anything else that stranding is is one and i'm not saying it will necessarily click with you but if you if, but if you're someone who wants to play something that's like very different something that's trying to do something different than all the other games out there and then something that's a breath of fresh air that stranding can be one that's all i'm saying yeah. Go on. makes sense um it was yeah but yeah like i said i um 
it does look like it's doing more or less not more or less but it does look like it's appealing to the the, one, the people that play the first one so i think that's mm-hmm. that's good i will say that i wasn't expecting so much i'm going to say asian focus because uh, sony appears to be way more western nowadays right but this state of play didn't felt like that it didn't it did f- feel like it did cover a lot more uh, uh foreign games for sure yeah hmm well, in terms of seven, yeah, I, I still also need to play a remake. Although, I'm probably gonna wait for all the. It's three games, right? That oh, they're making. Yeah, it's, a tril- it's a trilogy. Yeah. yeah, I'm probably gonna wait for all three to to release. Maybe try and play them Most more close together. They're, Marco, they were making the discs. Like, okay, well, technically, the first remake was not a remake of the entirety of this one, but but Rebirth is probably going to cover the entirety of this one and probably a good portion of disc two, most likely. Mm, all right. Because uh, Amaguchi, the director, said that they actually went out of the way to recreate the entire world map of the original game. Well, they uh, did already mention, you know, for example, some stuff is uh, purposefully kept away and kept for um, the third title, like Bulta in Rocket Town. Mm-hmm. True. Mm. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, um, I guess I'm, I'm excited to see what they have to showcase on that. And yeah, I think it was. A- it was okay. Pacing was good. They had a lot of stuff to show. Uh, All right. Uh, they also show the they, the the showcases were very detailed. You know, it wasn't just look here announcement, look here trailer. Right? It's, it's mm-hmm. they're actually showing big portions of gameplay, which is on my from my opinion, it's very important. Yeah. So and yeah, I think it was. And, even, hmm? and I'll argue even getting the developers on there to actually explain in their own words how the game is that also helps out yeah a lot. like yeah it, obviously it, it, it definitely feels like something has changed with this state of play like granted i was definitely anticipating the state of play more than most ever state of plays but i'll admit even outside of what i was excited for the most it did feel like they kept the pace a lot better here than they have with other state of plays yeah and it was and it did showcase a lot of games which from from my point of view, they normally only focus like on three or four games, right? But now they mm-hmm. showcase like a lot of them, so I think that's cool as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it was that was pretty good. All right, uh, let me go next because uh, yeah, this is pretty... that was great actually. I really really enjoyed everything that they showed here, um, and I'm really excited to to the rebirth super uh, special next week. So that should be fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations. Holy crap, it actually looks good. I, can, I cannot believe this. I have to I'm give like him... With... No way. <laughs> I'm, I'm like with Sonic, I'm like with Sonic Je- uh, Colors Ultimate and Sonic Origins, we're not going to start having the whole, oh, it's early footage co- copium, <laughs> because the game looks good from the get-go. Thank fuck. Not... I'm actually genuinely wondering who's developing this remaster. Is it Sonic Team themselves? Don't they know. didn't showcase in that game trailer, so I don't think it's Sonic Team. No, the the trailer doesn't say who's developing it. No. Um, How about I mean, that? I mean, maybe this is uh, maybe this is Kishimoto and his team's practice for what's next. Maybe I don't know. Well, whoever's um, working on it, somebody actually remembered Black Doom and Shadow the Hedgehog. Because well, 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 remember, well, to be fair, this this has been a thing in recently where Sega is being a lot more open to their past lore now and implementing it in things. Uh, I can, uh, I can, uh, you know what's interesting, Joe? We know that if there's a new campaign of Shadow, it's going to be Ian who who's going to be writing it. Oh yeah, uh, he's yeah. already given his so, obligatory knowing smile tweet in regards to the trailer. Let me just yeah, yeah everybody so, loves it. That, that's going to be funny, Joe, because the Shadow campaign story-wise is going to be such a tumultuous, cavernous, like so, sorry, gigantic. Uh, up in quality from the original generation's plot that it's going to be quite something. Like, I can imagine people playing Sun Generations for the first time with this, and they're thinking, why is the Shadow campaign so much better written? Some people are... Let me tell you a story about that. (laughs) Some people are speculating that we might also get something similar to what they did with Sonic Origins, like how Ian wrote new cutscenes for Sonic Origins that essentially ties all the classic Mm -hmm. games together. Some people are wondering if maybe we'll get new cutscenes for Generations that actually bulk up at story since Ian seems to be involved. That might be a 
bit more of a stretch, but eh, anything's possible. And Lord um, knows you could fit in something in between generation yeah, stuff. Says, on the front of the Hedgehog Twitter slash YouTube channel, it says here, play as Shadow Hedgehog in a brand new story campaign featuring never before seen powers and abilities that prove why he's the, known as the ultimate life form. And it says that it also includes a complete remaster of the classic Hedgehog Generations featuring newly remastered versions of iconic 2D and 3D stages with upgraded visuals and new bonus content. Hmm. So it can't go either way. It's Autumn potential, yeah. So, so that being said, yeah, unlike with Sonic Colors Ultimate, uh, looking forward to Blue Wolf's um, Project Re-Rainbow Overhaul mod because that's going to be the big fixer. But um, yeah, like... I definitely am, I'm definitely looking forward to Sonic X Shadow Generations. Um, this looks really good from the get go. Thank fuck. I'm like, I'm, I hope, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I can be more properly excited compared to how I was for Sonic Colors Ultimate and Sonic Origins. But I have to ask. Sonic Origins is fine, but it's not the super ultimate definitive collection it should have been. Definitely not, yeah. Like, I'll say this Origins is definitely. The best means of experiencing the story of the classics, and I do give it credit, it finally lets us know which came first, CD or 2, in the overall story of things, and its connecting yeah. story is good. But there are some things holding it back, like, if you have no other way to play the classics, it is definitely the best way to do it, but it has issues. This, on the other hand, looks pretty fly honestly like wow well, mm, again from does. the footage they showed it looks good and on par and the shadow campaign though holy cow yeah that that, that shadow campaign looks really cool actually so i'm definitely looking forward I, to that um i was just gonna ask um from the logo it looks like to be focusing uh, the shadow stuff looks to be focusing on the game right the shadow the hedgehog game yeah. but very stuff from SA2 in it. My, my speculation yeah. from Marco was uh, maybe it's a set of levels which were not in Generations and were focused on stuff that uh, Shadow played throughout the history. So stuff from SA2, Shadow the Edge, okay, maybe Sonic 06. I, mean, yeah, I was going to ask. I was going to ask. Generations game did include Sonic uh, Crisis City, so it's a possibility. Yeah, exactly. I was going to ask. We will see Mephiles <laughs> in this game. <laughs> God, can you imagine wow. if he's the final boss of his campaign? Well, I mean, uh, it... I, honestly, why not? At the, I mean, we, we have Crisis City in the game already. Exactly. So no, my, my question is, my question is, uh, the, getting into theory stuff, with with the time meter being time related, and obviously, and the Solaris also being time related, right? And um, would it would they fuse the same entities together somehow? Or maybe. Apply the red, having the red cone, but the time meter is a remnant of Solaris. So. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Like, okay. I get the feeling this is probably going to be something that uh, what was Shadow doing doing during Sonic Generations or something like that. Basically. You mean wasn't he? In, but he was in Sonic Generations. He was, he was but like maybe. <laughs> uh, you got this, I like, Sonic. I like the other <laughs> posers. He actually did not just stood stood there and cheer. That is yeah, you fought Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like silver. Obviously, <laughs> the only downside in all of this is that it's gonna be Kirk Fortune's uh, shadow in terms of voice, and I really, really do not like this take. This actually is works it, it, for it, it, continuity it, it, sake, since it was Kirk Fortune playing him in Generations originally. Is he still anyway. in Shadow? Is he still voicing Shadow? As far as I know, he still is, yeah. Well, well, here's the thing, Teo. If it helps you, the voice direction in Sonic Frontiers specifically to Roger Craig Smith, is very, very different than what's came before. They intentionally told him to tone down a lot of the stuff and be more mellow and more uh, down-to-earth compared to how he was pre-Frontiers. So we might get some different direction for Kirk as well, for him to sound different this time. Because if you, I don't know if you've seen any cutscenes from Frontiers still, but Roger sounds very different in Frontiers compared I to. I guess we games. shall see. So there was, so if it helps you, there was a recent change in the in voice direction. I mean, um, part of me doesn't mind too much because I can tell you that the the Italian VA that they got for him actually is much better. The problem is that I will have to listen to instead Sonic's Italian VA, which I don't normally like. So <laughs> take your poise on Exposer. So that being well, said... We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see how it goes. But anyway, Sonic X Shadow Generations looks really good, and I'm glad that they didn't fuck this one up. Fuck, thank but, fuck. But Pedro, um, will they bring Shadow back the most important thing? His guns. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't here's think we the, find that. Here's the thing. If the, here's the thing about the whole guns thing. Like, from what I'm seeing here, from what we're seeing here in the trailer, it's probably going to be focused on his chaos powers. Kind of like he's probably going to mm. play more like Sonic 06 rather than. Yeah, it Sonic. feels like that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah where it, if he does not, have guns, it would probably be attached to any vehicle he uses as opposed. If to you this. look at it, sorry. Most likely, oh. like at best, we'll get like vehicles, maybe. Uh, hope maybe who knows, but uh, gun him actually using a gun on his end probably not. They're probably gonna focus more on the uh, shadow, ca the chaos powers, based on what we're seeing here in the few bits of gameplay we get. Yeah. The only thing you see really is the, the the teleporting homing attack and the chaos sphere. Yeah, do sphere. Think, do you think they'll yeah. bring back Sean Shamel as Black Doom? That's fine by me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I love Sean Shamel anyway, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not really opposed to that. I mean. Black Doom is such a goofy villain. I love him. <laughs> yeah, no, I love him too. Yes, I do oh, love. Me. I do trust love me. Goku, Doctor Claw. Trust me. Uh, trust me. Uh, the story of uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, while being quite frustrating at times, it also can be uh, unintentionally hilarious. Uh, like, it is. It is. Favorite, one of my favorite moments from. One of my favorite unintentional hilarious moments in in that game is when black doom and shadow t teleport to the space to space and, and there's just like this like 10 second moment where they're just quiet and we just listen to the music and then suddenly all of a sudden black doom breaks us by saying so you finally realize how awful these humans are <laughs> what <laughs> it's, like, it's like this moment this quiet moment we were watching the awe of the universe and suddenly out of nowhere black doom by the way shadow did you know that humans suck <laughs> <laughs> uh, to hell with all about a Q-Bot. Can we have Black Doom as a comic relief character? <laughs> I just... Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, no. So definitely looking forward to this one. Stellar Blade looks great. Um, definitely getting this one day one on April. Uh, because it looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, not much more to say. It, it just looks freaking cool. Um, and it looks really fun. Uh, Rise of the Runner also looks really good, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it will give me some good stuff to hold me over until Sucker Punch announces Ghost of Tsushima 2. So, pretty cool. Um, Death Stranding 2 also looks, again, um, as someone who loves Death, Death Stranding, I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel, and yeah, this looks exactly what, uh, what I expected, and yeah, Troy Baker <laughs> is definitely going to be a highlight, I can already tell. <laughs> um, Troy Baker. He was he was also great in the first game, but yeah, I can definitely tell that Kojima just let him go wild in this one, and yeah, this was just... Troy Baker once again playing the Joker, even without Batman. Exactly. It's funny because he's actually played both Joker and Batman now at this point. <laughs> so hold on. So hold on, uh, Jova. Uh, if Sam is Mario. And she's Princess Peach. It's just not just I won't say the name just to avoid spoiling. Yeah. Uh, and she's Princess Peach. Is Troy Baker Bowser? No, Waluigi. Tail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see where Tail's coming from. He thinks he's the hot stuff, but I'd like to remind yeah. that one one side quest involves this guy making a fake order of fuck ton of pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, without, uh, without spoiling too much, Mar uh, Marco, one of the one of the big highlight jokes from Death Stranding is at, near the end, where Sam finally rescues um, uh, the woman he's trying to rescue, uh, and then there's some reveal about it, and Sam, aka okay, Norman Reedus, even sarcastically remarks, "Huh? So basically, I'm Mario and you're Princess Peach." Literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, so, so again, it's, even, that, it's, it's that classic. It's, it, it, on the beach. Yeah, it's it's that it's that classic Kojima brand of humor that is just clearly made by by a gamer for gamers. So it's pretty mm. cool. Um, so pretty cool. Um, the the more indie stuff yeah it looks it looks good i mean the whole diver thing eh, doesn't look like my cup of tea but it i guess it looks fine for what it is i guess um hell divers 2 again looks good not my cup of tea but from what i'm seeing it seems like it's a very multiplayer focused game so i'm not going to be playing it but again for what it is it looks good so i'm sure if people like it i'm pretty sure it'll be fine um what else uh, yeah, we t we talked a bit over Pedro, but just to mention, um, during that final speech that Kojima and everyone holds had, 
They did mention that Archer is done with Death Stranding 2 next year. He's going to start developing another Sony exclusive called Fizint, which is they will just as action espionage. You know... Okay, there's another game for me to look forward to. Thanks, uh, Herman. Uh, you know, no, uh, no. Again, 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 as you guys already know from the recent playthroughs, we basically, Mark, if you, don't, if you haven't been following us, we've recently gone through the first four Metal Gear Solid games recently, like mm -hmm. on, a, on, on a batch, like on a row. And mm -hmm. we all thoroughly enjoyed the journey, all of us. Um, like, I'm a huge fan of Hideo Kojima. I think he's absolutely uh, brilliant. Like, uh, developer who, or I'm going to remind you, uh, just to give you a basic idea, Marco, like the, the, the second Metal Gear game, before Metal Gear Solid, that was the, the first two Metal Gear games. The second one yeah. came out in 1990 and it was dealing with dealing with nuclear deterrence, um, and a lot of teams of war trauma and child slavery and stuff like that. And it, come on, this was a game that came out in 1990, back when video game stories for the most part were just a uh, person got kidnapped, go save, you know. Or gather uh, four so, orbs and save the, the world. <laughs> yeah. So, so Kojima, so Kojima, and of course, Metal Gear Solid was a revolutionary game, as we all know. Like, uh, Kojima is one of the industry's top innovators. Like, so, and then, and to this day, he still makes games unlike anybody else. So, I'm a huge fan of the guy, and, and the guy always makes something that's, even, even if it's something I, I'm mixed on, it's always something interesting. There's never a dull moment with his games, and that's something that I think should be celebrated. The fact that his games are always, at the very least, interesting uh, yeah. and, and memorable, right? There's all like, um, but it's it's just it's it, but again, and the stories in Metal Gear Solid games are some of the most prolific and memorable stories the gaming medium has ever told. So, pretty great. Um, no, definitely tail. The any Kojima game you throw at me, I'll play it. It's not even <laughs> uh, it, so nothing, nothing about that. Like, trust me. Uh, no, 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 trust me, Marco. Like, if you can get your hands on the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, I can, I, I recommend giving it a shot. It's not the, it's not super excellent, but they've recently been patching it up to a point where it's becoming acceptable. So, if you if you want to experience some of the most legendary games in, uh, ever, I recommend giving that collection a shot. Trust me. It's, even if it's not. Something that's that might necessarily super click with you. It's something that is interesting and unique that uh, you can't get from anybody else. I mean, that's yeah. That's I, I was thinking of uh, eventually okay. getting it. Yeah. Just to mention, there's uh, the article for uh, Sonic uh, Times Shadow Generations um, has been released, and the uh, Sega has released the proper synopsis. Actually, um, go ahead. Play Shadow the Hedgehog in a brand new story campaign featuring every from CM Power abilities. When Shadow's old nemesis Black Doom reemerges and threatens to take over the world, Shadow must journey into his own past, confront painful memories, face familiar foes, and unlock new powers to save the world and prove why he's known as the ultimate life form. Oh my god, we're gonna get to see Maria get shot in, in 4K! So basically, they got Ian Flynn to rewrite the story of Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay. Sure, sure, why not? So, I wonder how Black Doom will come back from the dead. Probably the Time Eater shenanigans. That, you mm. know what, that actually makes sense. I mean, this is Sonic Generation, so they're probably going to pull off some kind of time travel excuse, whatever. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait we'll, see, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hold we'll on. See how it goes. A Sonic product where Shadow ends up having a better story than <sighs> Sonic. My god, it's the 2000s all over again. <laughs> That's fine by me. Uh, that's fine by I mean, me to be well. fair, if we, if we're gonna talk about uh, the the adventure arc, right? Isn't that basically a, a shadow arc almost? I mean, well, it starts on the it, adventure two and ends on 06, remember, right? <laughs> remember, the first the third Sonic movie comes out this year, so this is gonna be a year where Sega is definitely going to be pushing Shadow pushing a lot. Shadow, Ex yeah. Expect expect the Sonic Adventure, if not probably both Sonic Adventure games, but at least Sonic Adventure two definitely will probably get a re-release at some point. Oh, uh, me or not? The movie. Oh, me or not? Because the, the teaser at the end of the second movie clearly tells us that the third movie is going to be an adaptation of Sonic Adventure 2. So most you, likely they're going to have a re-release of Adventure 2 at some you point. You really you can't I, I actually thought without the first adventure. I was actually sure. thinking that they might actually merge both adventure games into just one. Oh, me oh, oh my! Well, oh, me oh my! Mm, What's this game? Oh, a Sonic Adventure 3? Let me drop that here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, yeah. look, look, I'll be honest, 
Part of me was actually willing to throw caution to the wind and wonder if the bonus game was going to be Sonic Adventure 3. Now, obviously, anyway. so what you're saying is you want Sonic 06 Remake. Is that, is that what you want? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anything else, Pedro? Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I don't think so. Did I miss anything? I don't oh, think there is some stuff, but I guess in mind. Oh, yeah, Silent Hill 2. Oh, sorry, the Silent Hill stuff. Um, again, it, I'm not too much into horror games, but again, uh, it looks good for what it is. Uh, like I said, and, and Silent Hill 2 is, from what I've heard, a classic. So definitely going, definitely, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Hopefully, Bluebird team will keep their pants on when making this. Uh, look up, let's just say, their past game before this um, has issues mm -hmm. that's all i'll say for now um yeah i don't think i'm missing much of anything oh dragon's dogma 2 dragon's dogma 2 also oh, yeah. I, I actually recently got the first one on steam in a sale so i it's there so i could uh, it's now on my backlog so i can get to it at one some point so at one point at some point i'll try it out and uh, and if i like it i'll get the second one too why not so we'll see we'll see how it goes aside from that um i don't I think I'm missing anything more. No, I don't. I think we're done. Okay. Again, like you no, said, that... minor stuff that's not uh, particularly important. Gone. So yeah, no, that was great actually. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, the, this one, and a lot of stuff that I'm really excited for. Uh, so definitely, no complaints from me. Uh, this was actually fine. Uh, like n nothing very particularly disliked. Uh, but if I have to be honest, nothing that stood super particularly out. The bar was just relatively high across the board. Um, like I said, it's nice to see how divers to receiving enough promotion. Hopefully we'll manage to maintain a player base, you know. Um, so hopefully we'll manage to, to stay consistent. Stellar Blade, like I said, uh, the, since the early trailers, I was actually interested about it. Uh, we'll see actually how it goes. Um, like I said, I think it's supposed to actually get a PC release at some point eventually, so Maybe we'll see if that uh, actually still happens or not. Um, Sonic Time Shadows Generations, uh, as per usual, you know, uh, when it comes to these things, uh, I'm not the ideal type because I'm not a Sonic fan. Sure, I like Shadow, obviously, but, uh, nice. you know, that might not be enough to get the game, but we'll still, you know, see what the fandom actually reacts uh, because I guess that's possibly a better entertainment than the actual games. <laughs> well, from what um, it seems like, there doesn't seem to be any major discourse in this announcement so far. So the first something that I learned over the years is that the Sonic fan base is that, you know, vast and volatile enough to be unpredictable. That at one point they may say one thing, and the, sec the next second they could say the exact opposite. Well, somebody who but, is a um... Sonic fan, the fan base is thankfully. I mean, I'm not gonna act like there haven't still been bad eggs, but the fan base seems to be mostly more placated ever since we've been having a stream of good content. Shock of all right. sucks. Okay, um, okay, but that's the thing. Good content, it, it's gonna depend on who you ask. Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not get into that. To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my point stands. Anyway, next is Zenless Zone Zero ZZZ. As it's traditional for Hoyoverse stuff, uh, you know, finally zone, very good looking, poetry fun to play. But I'll be damned if I start supporting them, if I have to be honest. Uh, so I'll just be limiting to see what it's about, and that's it. Dave the Diver getting a Godzilla DLC is cute, uh, so it's nice to see. I mean, I will eventually check the game out on my own anyway, so we'll see on that. Um, Judas tells me exactly what I what I knew already from the first trailer, so it's not too much. But it does look fine on its own, being too shabby about it. Um, the Until Dawn remake, remaster, rebuild, uh, whatever thingy. Again, it seems to be the same game anyway, so good on that. Uh, I really wish there were other Sony themed games of it received proper port in terms of priority before that, but Sure, if, it's, if it helps of getting this also a PC port, uh, I guess, you know, might as well for that. Uh, why not? Um, the Kojima stuff, uh, 
And again, Death Stranding 2 gives us an actual better idea what it's about. Again, it is one of those sequels where since we have already a foundation of the game, it's taking less time to be developed and as such, mm -hmm. you know, only applying new stuff doesn't require too much time. So, nice enough, and they allowed the trailer to showcase plenty of the gameplay, not just the story bits, you know. As for the new game, Fizint, it's just what uh, Kojima himself told us, so we'll have to see. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2, I already saw enough at the Capcom presentation last summer, so I already know what kind of game this kind of a game is. Um, that Vampire Theme Games V something might seem to be like a roguelike of some kind, but the Death Cross teaser doesn't tell that much. Um, we'll have to see, actually. Um, I think that's it for the most part. Uh, probably still forgot about something, but uh, this was fine. We'll have to see what the Square Enix, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, special specific state of play will actually tell, you know. Um, alright, that's it. Jova. Yeah, no, this was definitely one of the better if not one of the best data plays we've gotten not just because the announcements were pretty great but the whole show as a whole felt well put together and the pacing was good like even if i wasn't interested in all these games it still felt like it had a good sense of variety you know put in some of the vr stuff here but no one bit felt too overwhelming Aside from maybe where they went on a bit, but let's actually look at the stuff here. So, Helldivers 2. Okay, that looks like a good Star Troopers pastiche overall. Stellar Blade. Like I said, it looks like the love child of Nier Automata and Final Fantasy VII. Still, it looks dandy and pretty well for what it's opting for, so good stuff there. Sonic X Shadow Generations. I have to give him credit for actually sticking with that name and... Googling that name is going to be so much fun for the kids, I'm sure. Especially if they forget to include the generations part in it. Or you have to filter off. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm half convinced that they knew, they knew how much attention that title alone would get. But I, I just have to give them credit for actually sticking to their guns on it, because... My god, you just know there's going to be an uptick in Sonato fan art just because of this game. And, holy cow. I mean, the game's already trending partially because of that, but, like, the joke's right itself. It, well, I guess we've kind of got a bit of a trend with that going on since we've also got Godzilla x King Kong. Like, I get what they mean by it. I'm sure most of the internet gets what they mean by it. But come on, it's the internet, you just know. You just know what's going to be that joke in the back of everyone's mind when they see it. <laughs> well still, it was very brave of them to publish the gay fanfictions of Mr. Sonic the Hedgehog and Mr. Shadow the Hedgehog, finally marrying after all these generations. <laughs> okay, okay, all joking aside, it looks good. Well, it looks like, well, okay, first for the generation stuff, it looks like a remaster should. Pretty much the same, but upscaled and potentially running better. The surprise, though, is how substantial the Shadow add-on stuff looks. Like, and yeah, Shadow got episode Shadow and Forces, but that was like, you know, taking sections from levels, reorienting a fit for him. But, you know, it was kind of like a little episode DLC. This, though, on the other hand, looks like it's gonna be a full new campaign. I mean, it's even got a story description, and Ian Flynn's apparently the one penning it, and well, given that Ian Flynn's been doing a pretty good job as writer for the games lately, <laughs> um, it's definitely something to look forward to. Also, on closer inspection, that quarter that Shadow is falling Black Doom through looks like the quarter where he's taking Maria as they're getting chased right before she gets shot, so yes. we could see some interesting narrative storytelling being done with the levels, which definitely mm. seems promising. I can't quite get the best gauge, but it looks like we will be using the chaos powers for Shadow, so I dig that. 
Um, so something here, Jova. There's someone who's saying on SSMB, kind of a missed opportunity to call it Sonic Generations and Shadow. <laughs> yeah, they could have called it that, Sonic Generations and Shadow. True, yeah, they could have. Although, again, I have to wonder if, you know, I wonder if Sonic X Shadow Generations was just a working title name, but then when it got leaked in the, uh, like, you know, um, well, okay, maybe at some point they just figured, guys, wouldn't it be so funny if we actually went with the shipping title since... That's a flipping shipping title, and I, I highly doubt that they did not know, especially given how popular the Sonic X Shadow ship is to an alarming rate. But I digress. I mean, uh, the I wanna I wanna believe that, but on 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 some level, I might think it might just be naivety in the sense that it's it's like. Shadow Shadow storyline probably might clash with Sonic storyline, maybe. Like to be so fair, it's just a cross period. To, to be fair to them, the cross is typically meant as like a crossover thing in that regard. Again, it's like with Godzilla X King Kong. So yeah, like I get the actual intent here, but I legit uh, uh okay. There are many things one can be naive about, but there is no way. No way that they do not know that X is used for shipping and that Sonic and Shadow are a very popular ship. Like, in fact, Ian... Well, okay, okay, granted, Ian's not part of Sonic Team over in Japan, but, like, if Ian's, uh, Bumblecast stuff is anything to go by, there are definitely at least staff on Sega that know about the Sonic and Shadow ship. Oh, yes, of course. But all joking aside... It would be weird if we didn't know about it. <laughs> but all joking aside, this looks way better than what they did with Sonic Colors. Again, it actually looks like it will function and look nice. But the Shadow add-on could be a good incentive for people to buy this version as well, too. So, credit where credit is due. It looks like they have learned their lesson from Sonic Colors Ultimate. Um, let's see. Dave the Diver, yeah, that's coming, and Godzilla is coming. Judas, that looked nice. I'll admit, I was a bit miffed about the Seven Rebirth thing at the very end, just being an announcement of an announcement, but, you know, if it means Rebirth will get the time it needs without dragging things out, I can appreciate that, since it is getting its own state of play. Death Stranding 2 was actually a pretty good showing. Also, nice to see that Troy Baker's character is back. Edgy tryhard as usual. <laughs> like, he talks a big game, but honestly, I find him more hilarious than anything else. In a good way, mind you. In a good way. And yes, the baby is still adorable. That is nice to see. I will say this now, knowing that Kojima is apparently on better terms with Konami, I wonder if eventually they're going to maybe ask him to make a new Metal Gear game when he's available for it. I doubt it. I remember, Joe, mm -hmm. as, as, we both, as we all talked about in our commentaries, Kojima has, had wanted to move on from the Metal Gear series for a while now. The weird thing was, I by the time of 5, it seemed like he was, you know back in the drive on it, but then, you know, the stuff with Konami happened, and... Ugh. Yeah. Well, really? yeah because remember... you didn't... Sorry, go. Cool. Well, but remember, Jova, like, um, Metal Gear Solid V was meant to bridge uh, the entire series by connect by being the final Metal Play Boss game before the original Metal Gear, so even back before that, Kojima envisioned it as the final Metal Gear game that would make the, the series finally go full circle. Um, so I'm pretty sure five, he would definitely want to just stop there because there was, after that, there was literally nothing more to tell aside from, of course, the, what happened between two and four. So there was also that speculation of a Metal Gear Rising sequel, but I digress. I digress. Yeah, basically, Marco, just to give you an idea, Metal Gear Rising was originally going to be a prequel to Metal Gear Solid 4 that would explain what happens in between two and four. Mm -hmm. To how, uh, how Raiden becomes how he is in the fourth yeah, game, basically. How, Ra yeah. how Raiden becomes how he is in the fourth game and how he saves a, saves a certain character uh, in between. Uh, uh, but Platinum Games uh, decided to change the direction of the story to after four. But then, uh, I then, think 
Sorry, go on. Go, go. But then, but then, could you? But then, uh, but, but after finishing Metal Gear Rising, could you Productions actually come to them? Oh, would you guys like to make a second Metal Gear Rising, and we can go back to the original ideas because we still have that story to tell. But mm. at the time, believe it or not, Marco Platinum denied <laughs> the <laughs> opportunity because they had other plans. Oh, uh, the irony. So I would I say, I would say it was a a good decision to to go with like it's. 25 years in the future or something like that, right? Uh, it's four years after four. Four years? Okay. I think that was a, that was a good idea because um, some people like me who had barely seen stuff like Metal Gear, I could get into yeah. the story no problem because it's so, like it has nothing to do with the rest of the of the series. It's more self-contained, yeah. Yeah. It still has, it still has some references because you meet Sunny. Yes, uh, yes. From, but uh, it's still there. Uh, and that's true. That is a cool thing. I still would, as a Metal Gear fan, I still would like to see that untold story be told, though. Because oh, no, I, I would like to see a, a sequel like, for sure. I like because Rising. Because I feel because I feel like uh, because the story of how, of what happened in between two and four is something that has never been told. Uh, it's something that's it, it's that one regret, the one untold story that we never got. So it would have been really cool to close that gap. But I'm not going to cross my fingers for anything. Go on, Jova. Um, but yeah, no, um, Judas, like I said, looks nice. It'll be interesting to see what the makers of Bioshock have planned in that regard. Rise of Ronin looks like it could masquerade as something of a cool sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. It's got an interesting mix overall. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it because I'm super, super excited for Ghost of, uh, Ghost of Tsushima too, because Ghost of Tsushima is one of my all-time favorite games. But while I don't have that, I can't at least have this to hold me over. So. As for Zenless Zone Zero, eh, I don't really fall away over. It's like, it looks <laughs> like it'll be fine, I guess. I mean, I've never actually played these games, but like they look, they look great visually. I'll say that. I'm gonna. I play the few hours of uh, of Genshin. It's like the game, at least Genshin. Does play, you know, it does play good. I, I enjoyed it. It's just really the the gacha aspects that kind of threw <laughs> yeah. me off. Yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, Silent Hill Two, aka how Resident Evil Remake is uh, achieving world domination across devs' horror mindsets. Like, don't get me wrong, it looks cool, but yeah, that blatantly is Resident Evil gameplay instead of like typical Silent Hill gameplay. I don't know who you think you're trying to fool. That said, looks good. And then there's, um, <clears throat> that, uh, Silent Hill short game which got Shadow Drop, which, God, I really do wonder if that's just PT made into a, ahem, <clears throat> fuller game, essentially. It'd be something. I mean, obviously oh. minus Norda, I mean, obviously minus Norman Reedus, but... The similarities were certainly there. I guess Konami are getting their act back together, it seems. So, there's that. Dragon's Dogma 2, yeah, neat showing from Capcom there. It's like I said, overall, I feel this was definitely one of Sony's best handled state of plays. All the announcements did feel like they had a good sense of punch and power to each of them. To the point where, again, even the ones I'm not really interested in, I felt got a good showing. I, the only thing I would have changed was maybe have like a super duper ultra secret after you announce a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth announcement. Because Rebirth was definitely something people were looking forward to for this state of play. That's the only other thing I would change, so otherwise, nah, State of Play was pretty well done. Good show. And I think that about brings us to a close now. Um, yes, so. <laughs> Alright then. Wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that as a final thought that as someone who's, who, who hasn't gotten a, a PlayStation uh, console since the PlayStation 3, uh, I wouldn't say it, it, this showcase would make would make me buy a PS5, but it it definitely shows a, uh, for me at least. It definitely shows a, a stronger footing than they have showed so far. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm still waiting for that moment where I feel like I absolutely need a PS5. 
I'm not to that moment yet, but this is definitely at the very least a good supporting case for the PS5. Hmm. All right then, audience. Well, I hope you enjoyed this state of play as much as we did, and we will see you for whatever direct show, state of play, or inside Xbox will come next. See you next time.